mailbag time again. Bunch of stuff here. Got stuff for this thing. This is from Ian J. Wonder who that could be. <laughs> so this is from Ian Scott Johnson, another YouTuber. If you're not familiar with him, where have you been hiding? <laughs> He's been working on a couple of projects recently, so he's got an updated board for the Adventist R6581. So there was a modification board to convert the VFD to a OLED screen, which was done by Mikkel T. And then Ian decided to do another version, based off of his work, to use a different type of screen to try and get better resolution and things like that, which he did. And he sent me a prototype already, and now he's got an updated board here, which has got slight improvements on it. So that's what it sent me here, is this board for the R6581T. Now I think Ian's made this open source as well, so I think you can just get that yourself if you need it, and all the files and stuff I think is made available on the EV blog forum. So if you want that, and you've got one of those meters, then here you go. I believe it also fits in some other things as well. But, the main thing it sent me here is this. I mean it's obviously sent me a little flex cable and a header pin there too, that's to go with this board. But it's also sent me another one, which I think is the main reason he's posted this to me this board here. So this, as you can see here, the HP 4338A slash B, full wide Kelvin adapter. Now I actually have one of these meters, which is why he sent me this. And it's got quite a chunky interface on it, let me show you. This thing here. Now I've actually done a video repairing this particular unit, because it was all broken up and bent, and I actually 3D printed a new lever for it and things like that. I did a video about this particular thing, refurbishing this and repairing it because it is all smashed up when I got it. As you can see it's quite chunky and bulky and you know if you've got a lot of protrusion from your shelving things like that maybe it's going to be in the way big thick cable. So Ian didn't like this on his unit so he's designed this little PCB which designed to replace three of the sockets. The reason it's doing three not four because in a way the fourth one's superfluous. So basically what it is this is low current low potential but inside these are actually linked together Right, so this and this are the same thing, even on the actual meter itself, on the 4338, at least on the B, they're linked together. It's the same potential. So you don't actually need two connections, one connection works fine. Um, and I was quite surprised by that when I pulled this thing apart originally and looked at this and thought, hey, it's strange, why has it got four connections when it only actually has three? <laughs> so, yeah, some of the things I did notice when I was repairing this thing. Ian's also noticed the same thing as well, maybe from when he saw my video, I don't know. but. So I've done this board, so you can mount some sockets on these, these little BNCs, I've ordered some, they haven't arrived yet, and so they'll go onto the board, you mount those on there, and you can 3D print my levers, these are available on Thingiverse, look for my DEFPOM, DEFPOM, um, I don't know what they call called, HP levers or something, I can't remember what I call them now, if you look for 4338, it'll probably show up, or LCR meter, or something, I don't know. These are on Thingiverse, if you want to download these things, you can print them yourself, and push them onto a standard BNC. Yeah, so right, that's what that's for. So that's to put onto my unit. So obviously once you've actually got this thing populated and stuff, you can just run some wires to it. It's got some cable tie mounts here. So you run cable ties through those. You run a couple of like silicon cables up or something like that. If you go to the device you want to measure. And um, you can run some little four wire cables off. So you've got the high and low connections just here. And you've got some cable tie holes there. So, nice and easy. But nice and compact. Maybe you want to 3D print a cover to go over it as well. I don't know. Maybe. Don't think I'll give you links down below for things I'll give you links for. Oh, package of packages. What's in here? Bag inside a bag inside a bag. It's, uh, I need this real knife for this one. What does it say? Copy LCR Kelvin Test Clay Bridge. I don't know. <laughs> Right, so here's some, some clips, which Ian actually recommended, four wire Kelvin clips. This is actually for this project here, and I'm going to build that up. So he reckons these seem to be quite nice, these are fairly expensive, you get different types, there's AliExpress ones. There weren't many of these left when I purchased these, so I don't know. Very strong spring on them, decent contact, but yeah, a pair of those. It's a bit more expensive than all ones. That's what they are. What else have we got in here? 
SMA to MCX connector which is a male to female SMA and a BNC to something BNC to SMA It's my female. Yep, it's my female to BNC female. I didn't actually have one of these. I thought I did have one. I went to go and use one. I needed one for the conversion I was doing. I couldn't find one. I thought, oh, I thought I had one, but it turns out I didn't. Couldn't find one anywhere. So I bought one. I probably should have bought two. But uh, anyway, that's what that is. This is related to the Active Probe, which I got given to review recently. I didn't actually have any connectors and adapters and things like that to suit the connections I may need to do for that probe. So. As you would have seen in previous mailbags, we've been buying adapters and things for that. Well, this is a decent package. That's what she said. I'm sure, there's something in here somewhere. Hmm. <sighs> well, it's. Despite all the packaging, it's still damaged. <laughs> just put it in the box, shouldn't they? USB lamp. USB lamp, little control here like this. This is very similar to one that's on my other lamp actually. No, it's not quite the same, but anyway, USB lamp thing. So I got this for in a motorhome because I do a lot of, well, I do electronic repairs whilst in a motorhome at events sometimes. It's been a bit of a pain trying to work on things which are required detail because my eyesight's not getting any better. <laughs> I can still see but sometimes magnifiers are a big help and I didn't actually have a magnifier I could use in a motorhome so I thought I'd get this because I can clamp this on anywhere as various surfaces and edges I can clamp this to and then it gives me a little work lamp with a magnifier as you can see there. Um, it's not particularly high magnification I think it's big enough that's actually looking pretty good actually for that obviously it's only quite small but I don't need to do it very much let's turn the power supply on over here and we'll see how much power this thing uses and we'll give it a test out plug that in channel 4 out okay when there's nothing on it's using 1 milliamp turn the power on 500 milliamps 530 milliamps or so at full brightness 400 there, 300 there, roughly 70, 320, 260, 220, 165, 128, 88, 33, 33 is the lowest, and that's just barely on there. But it's still doing enough illumination if you're in a really dark area. So that seems alright. Um, as always, I wouldn't use this thing at full brightness anyway, you just, you just never do that. If I go like down one level, that's 25% less power, 25% less stress on the uh, LEDs for almost you know very little difference in brightness. I mean, I still you can see it sliding my hand up there, so that's fine. That's all right. So half an amp at most. So plug in into the 12 volt adapter or some other USB power supply. No issue at all. We can plug into a laptop if you needed to. So that's good. I mean, I could clamp this onto my desk here, for example clamp it onto there while it just reaches and I could like you know do stuff like this that's fine before we're doing soldering and what have you so that's perfectly good happy with that so I've got to mention this actually does dual color as well so 10 levels apparently I don't think you got 10 did we? I don't know maybe you did let's get closer mm -hmm. and so it's got warm white cool white and a mixture of both so you can do like it's uh, 5,000 to 6,500 Kelvin, so it's obviously this cool white and it's a warm white. So, in that range, so uh, if you're mixing the two, what are you going to be getting? 5,7 or something, roughly. Yeah, anyway, here you go. And yeah, 5 to 10 watts, it reckoned, and that's correct. Somewhat larger package, that's what she said again. As you can see, it's been squashed. Right, it's been squashed. It's it's not on a good trip. Especially this end was squashed and bent. It's been bent. Hopefully what's inside here isn't damaged. So 
it's another lamp. So this is the main bit I'm worried about is this because if this has been bent it's not very good. Seems to be okay. Alright, that seems okay. And there's the actual lamp head here. So it's very much like the one I've already got on my desk here, or just off to the side, in, I don't know, this thing. Very much like that. Except it's slightly bigger. Everyone likes it slightly bigger, I think. So let's just put this in. Just going to assemble it. Got to try and feed the wire through at the same time, apparently. But I'll get this assembled. So yeah, that's that one together. But yeah, the idea is this is going to replace my existing one here, which is basically the same thing. And the reason for that is that this one doesn't really reach far enough. So this is as far as I can go with it. All right halfway across my desk to here and sometimes it's not enough I want to go slightly further over or a bit more that way or something you know or a bit height or something and it's just not always quite there so I've got this one thinking it's going to be slightly better reach and hopefully it will give me a bit more motion for where I want to put it let me see if I can set this up and this also came with this bracket I've already got a bracket for it so I'm not too worried about that now this is my original one here, I'm just undoing this nut here because I actually have this frame earthed. I found that earthing the frame reduced some of the noise from the light. It is quite a noisy light, it does generate a lot of noise. So um, it's noticeable, if I, you know, I've, I've done demonstrations before my oscilloscope, I've been doing things. And the, um, the noise levels on the scope drop down significantly when I turn this light off. So it gives you an idea that the light isn't particularly quiet. So I have it earthed. So maybe you can see here the actual controller here is basically the same. I'm hoping this one's a bit quieter but I doubt it. See what this ferrite's everywhere we had to try and help keep noise down as well. Everything I could do to get noise down I was doing it. It did help slightly but so you can barely side by side I've got them folded up the same way. You can see this one's basically got this extra extension just here. This is the extra distance we're going to get. I've got to start to my power supply. We should do the same test shouldn't we? Turn the power on. You can see I've transferred the through it's over. Let's turn it on. There we go, it's gone 800 milliamps. That's full brightness. Let's change colours. That's just blue, so it's warm white, uh, cool white, warm white. It's 550 milliamps, and the mixture is 800 milliamps. So cool white's 560, warm white's 560, 800 both. Okay, and then let's say it's full brightness. Drop it down. 700, 620, 540, 450, 400, 320, 230, 150, 76. So the maximum was at least 700, and, well, basically 800 maximum. So that's alright. And again, don't want it flat out. That's 700 there. Almost no difference in brightness. So that's fine. How much noise is put out? I don't know. I expect it's just as bad as my other one. Now, my other one actually did take it apart and put some extra capacitors and stuff inside it to try and add some filtering. It may have helped marginally. It wasn't much. It was almost imperceivable. It did have a very slight improvement, but yeah. I've got to put this earth onto the end here. Well, onto this end here. And I can mount it up and I'll be done. There you go. That's all installed. Now, all I've got to do is really is cable tie the controller here to the spot where I can reach it because I like to have it mounted here. So I'll just push a button about trying to find the wire and find the controller but this gives me lots of options about how it's positioned so you can see how much reach I've got on this thing now it's much better so I could you know have it so it's like this so it's more of an overreaching thing and I'll just lift it up get it out of the way so that's good um, much better one of the things you have to do with these is tune how tight these bolts are because if these are too tight which they are usually when you get them they've been tightened down it's quite stiff it can be a problem to actually get it positioned nicely. Right now it kind of wants to move by itself or loosen it off quite a bit. 
you've still got the tensioners here these little wing nuts these are basically loose right now right it's barely any tension on here at all um, so that means that I can give it more tension and make it lock in place if I really want to um, yeah these are always too tight these things anyway so that's good so I've got options about how I actually set this up I do it like this and have it more compact over here but kind of in my way of my arms or I could bring it upwards so I'll get from my arms with this that swings in and out so I think probably like this is what I'm likely to end up having but uh, that's good happy with that been wanting a longer one for a while and that's what she said oh I've got a big box here from a Ukraine yep yeah, Ukraine again which means you know it's going to be Tesco isn't it? because it's always Tesco and I get stuff from Ukraine Always very well packaged as well when I get stuff in there too. I think almost always it's really well packaged. is a uh, not a standard resistor 100 mega ohm 0.005% from 1988 nice so let's hook this up to my Keefley and we'll see what we get out of this thing actually does this have posts? it does have posts so I can plug bananas straight into those we'll do that well, plugged into my Keefley here, I'm getting 99.95 ohms, so it's outside of this 0.005%, but I don't know how accurate the Keefley is at that particular resistance. I haven't verified those measurements on this thing yet. I should check it on something else too. On the key side, I'm getting 99 point something. Give us some chance to settle. Well, okay, now it's settled down a bit. It's basically bang on that thing which is kind of what I expect. Makes me think the Keefley is slightly out on the resistance range. That's that chested I suppose. I chucked it on my Advantist R65812 that is suffering a lot of noise over there. I'm having trouble reading it. So I, mean, I was looking at around 99.95 on that as well but that's not warmed up. It's only just been turned on for like five minutes or something so it's not gonna be right but interesting. So it looks like it's measuring low potentially but doesn't really matter too much. I mean, it would be nice if it was doing 99.995. Don't think it's that close. <laughs> but it is old. I mean, it would be nice to get a proper calibration on this thing, get it figured out exactly what this thing is. But unfortunately, it doesn't say anywhere. Nothing underneath it or anything like that. So sometimes a sticker on the side it will say what they are. This one, not so much. Another standard for the dab, I suppose. But it would be nice if I knew exactly what it was. So it's that. Now, thanks Ian for those boards once again. He sent them to me at no cost, which is great. You know, it's very generous of him. It's always very generous, is Ian. That board for the R6581, that I will do one day. It's on my list of things to do, and I'll be replacing the display with a better display, which is what Ian's based this board on. I've already done a video on the conversion to the existing display, which is what's based on Mickel T's version, or Mickey T. This is an improved version based on that original work, as I said so I need to get that sorted out one day it's on my list of things to do and now I've got this other little project too at least that might be too bad I've got the parts coming for that obviously I've got the clips already I've got clips I need I was waiting for the BNC to turn up other videos to watch down below there subscribe over there if you want to subscribe there's a Patreon spot link over there if you want to donate to the channel and give me a tip a couple of dollars a month that's all it can cost you and you'll get extra content catch you later